Hello, I, I want to talk today about a name of God that talks about his everlastingness, his internalness. God is everlasting, and, and one of the names that seem to describe that so well is the name El Olam. El Olam. And we see this in verse 33 of chapter 21 of Genesis. Then Abraham planted a task, a Tamasrisk tree in Beersheba, and there called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. He called on the name Eolam, <clears throat> which tells us that God has no beginning or ending. He is the beginning and the end. He's the one that works throughout all ages. He, he gives strength to the weary throughout time. He has no length of time. <clears throat> Oh, God never changes. Oh, we may change. Well, did, didn't God become man? Well, he came man. But he still is everlasting. His, his, his attributes still remains the same. <clears throat> we look at Hebrews 13.8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, God does not change in his attributes. God does not change. And right now, at this time, Jesus is the same age as when he resurrected from the dead. <clears throat> oh, God doesn't change, we change. We're reading Hebrews 9, verse 12. What does Hebrews 9, verse 12 talks about? <clears throat> <clears throat> Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once and for all, having attained internal redemption. All his redemption doesn't change either. <clears throat> oh, he is everlasting. <clears throat> Forgive me for my coughing. But just Know that, that we have a God that doesn't change his mind. <clears throat> he doesn't have a plan A and, <clears throat> and if this doesn't work, let, let me try plan B. No, if God is always a plan A, he never changes his mind. Oh, when he sets his heart on something, he will fulfill his purpose. That's the problem is now in days, people do not know God. Let's read Psalms. What the Psalms say? The Psalms. Psalms 90. <clears throat> Forgive me for my coughing. I always cough. And it's not because I'm. It's not because of COVID. <laughs> Everyone wants to blame COVID for everything. <clears throat> I've been coughing for over 20 years. And if you have not heard my YouTube videos and haven't heard me cough, that's because I've been editing it for those for those eight or ten years I've been in YouTube. We read in Psalms 90, verse 1 and 2. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generation. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you have formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Oh, you are Elam, you from everlasting to everlasting. <clears throat> sometimes you want to think, oh, let, let, let me think way back. And sometimes your mind kind of fogs away when you try to remember your childhood and and, and you can't really remember that much of your childhood. At least I can't. <clears throat> There's certain things I can remember, some things I can't. <laughs> then you try to imagine somebody who's older than your mom. Well, you, then you think about your grandma. Well, someone that's older than your grandma, then you think about your great-grandma. Someone that's older than your great-great-grandma, then you might think of your great-grandfather and great-grandma. I don't know. But just just try to go back and back and back and back. And, and there's a time where you're like, I can't go back in my family tree because I don't even know how far it goes. I don't even know who begat who. <clears throat> I'm, I, don't, I don't know my genealogy that far. 
Oh, but, but if you think about God, God goes way back. Before there was a world. Before there was the stars, the sun, the moon. Oh, God goes way back. All that time people have tested God. And they've seen he was faithful. Abraham tested God. Noah tested God. Saf tested God. Enoch tested God. Oh, we, we just we just go back and back and back and back and and from the beginning of time we could say, well, God has been tested and He's been faithful to them all, and He remains faithful to you and to me as well. Let's play a song. Let's play. Have Thy Own Way, Lord. the potter I am the clay mold me and make me after thy will while I am still have thine own way have thine own way search me and try me master today Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now, as in thy presence, humbly I bow. Have you not said in your life, have you, my, thy own way, Lord. I, um, your ways are better than mine, you know. I, I try to do things in my own way, and I always fail at. We read in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31. Have you not known, have you not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, to those who have no might, he increases in strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh, if you're weary, if you're tired... If, if, if you're just, if you just can't anymore trust in the everlasting God, 
He gives strength to those who faint and those who are weary. Those who can't no more. Those who say, I'm tired of this walk. Oh, just just hang out, hang in there, brother or sister. Just hang in there. You need strength from above. And, 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 and I know that sometimes Satan just punches you down and you need to get back up. This is not, this is not about just I fell and I can't get up. Now, if you fall and you can't get up, you want to have something to tell you, brother or sister. You, you don't, you're not a Christian. <clears throat> if you get knocked out and you just stay down, you're a Christian if you get back up on your feet. This is not, this is not about how many times I get knocked down on the floor. This is about how many times I get up and persevere in that walk. Oh, don't, don't come complain with me and tell me, oh, I had a difficulty. There was a lady one time, <clears throat> she told us, me and my late wife, I left the walk of God because they took my food stamps. I looked at her, and my late wife looked at her like, you left the walk of God because they took out your food stamps? People leave God for anything. All that, I left the church because this person didn't want to shake my hand. I don't want to know about Jesus. What does the government and what does another person not wanting to shake a hand has to do with Jesus? <clears throat> if you just hang on with Jesus, they'll give you back your food stamps. If you just hang on with Jesus, God will make them shake your hands. And if they don't shake your hands, they know Christian. They don't know Jesus. But people find the weirdest reasons why to leave the walk of God. Why to leave the everlasting God? They have not tasted and seen that the Lord is God. Oh, it just makes me mad at times. I've seen people leave the walk of God for anything. Just anything. And and it's just their excuses. If people find the the weirdest excuse... One time I was witnessing to somebody, witnessing to somebody, and they told me, I stopped being a Christian because there was no women pope. And I was like, why are you telling me that? I'm not Roman Catholic. And what does Protestantism have to do with Roman Catholicism? You know, it's like, People find the re- the weirdest reasons to leave the walk of Christ. It has nothing to do with the Bible. And if it does have to do with the Bible, it's something that could be reclined together. Oh, people leave the walk of Christ for anything. Don't be that kind of person. Just don't be that kind of person. Be the kind of person that perseveres to the end. The kind of person... If you hear me walking in the closet, it's because a car with music or something is playing, and and I have to run to the closet to be able to speak. I go to Romans one verse twenty. We see this verse. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his internal power. And Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because though they knew God, verse 21, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Oh, don't let that happen to you. You want to retain God in your thoughts. That internal God. That uncaused cause, the one who is uncaused but causes everything else to be. Oh, we need that God. We need that creator to create a new way for us. If you're not with him, he'll create a new way for you. A way where there is no way. We, we've seen him break mountains, move mountains. We've seen him break yokes, break chains, heal the sick. 
We see them bring people to Christ. I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen Muslims cry in tears saying, I want to receive Jesus. <clears throat> Because he tasted and saw the power of God. Oh, I've seen Jehovah Witnesses saying, I want to leave that walk that I'm walking, and I need the real Jesus. I need the God Jesus. Oh, I've seen that. I've seen Satanists, Satanists come to Jesus. Oh, you can't say that you cannot. Do the impossible. With the Holy Spirit, you can do the impossible. Why? Because he's doing the impossible with you. Everyone here in this program has a testimony to say. Well, God took me out of this. God took me out of that. Oh, I'm still struggling here, but I'm doing it less than I used to do it before. Oh, we need those testimonies. We need testimonies of what God been doing in your life. It helps people. It builds up people. Let's listen to a song. You know why Jesus is called a rock? A rock is really old. If you, if you look at rocks, some rocks could date thousands of years. 
and it just stays there. It's unmovable. Some stones, you're like, how old is this stone? It's just been there. It's probably older than my mother, my grandmother, my great grandmother. It just, it just stays there and it, it stays firm. And that's with God. God just stays. He doesn't change. Oh, we may change. Sometimes we change our attitude towards people. Sometimes we love people. Sometimes we don't feel like loving that person. Sometimes we don't even feel like saying hello. I'll be honest with you. Some people, I like to say hello to them, but then sometimes I'm just like, I just want to be left alone. Oh, but with God, it's not, the, it's not like that. With God, it's not like that. He always wants you by his side. He always wants you close by. Oh, draw near to him, and he'll draw near to you. He'll never come with an attitude telling you, "Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to talk to you today. Don't pray to me today." God doesn't do that. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you today. Sometimes I try to talk to people, and they don't want to hear me today, or they might not even answer the phone. And, and I'm just calling them, and I'm like, "Oh man, I hate calling them sometimes." My mother. Sometimes my mother doesn't answer the phone. Or sometimes my brother does answer the phone, and I really want to talk to them at that moment. But it's not with God. <clears throat> this God who is everlasting, you can call on Him anytime, day or night. Oh, He'll always be there by the phone. <laughs> call Him, and He will answer you. He will always say hello. <laughs> Oh, you could trust in Him. You could confide in Him. You could depend on Him. Oh, friends, like I said before, they're like glass. You lean too much on them, they will break. <clears throat> I was talking to somebody yesterday. Oh, they heard me. They heard my sad story and everything. And then they walked pretty fast out the door. Oh, you know why? Because they don't want to stay. But God always stays by your side. He will never forsake you. He will never leave you if you have Jesus. We read when Jesus appeared in the book of Revelation to John the Apostles. The Apostle. He says this, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord. Who is, who was, who is to come, the Almighty knows his everlastingness. He doesn't have a beginning because he is the beginning. He doesn't have an end because he is the end. Oh, this is deep, brothers and sisters. This is very deep. This is profound. God is internal. In Isaiah 41 verse 4 says, Who has performed and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, am the first, and with the last, I am He. Isaiah 44 verse 6 says, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Oh, there is no God besides this God. We have an audience with the king. Do, do you understand this? <clears throat> I may try to call Biden, which I really don't even care about calling him. I'd rather try to call Trump. But anyway, I may try to call Biden, and he won't answer me back. Because I don't have an audience with the president. But I have the audience with someone that's greater than the president. Someone that's better than the president. <laughs> Someone who won't tell me a lie. Oh. Someone who told me, who won't tell me I'm against abortion and then as soon as he becomes president, he wants to abort every baby that is. Oh. I have an audience with the unshakable, unmovable God. I have an audience with Jesus. That to me is profound. Oh, that is profound. That is very profound. Revelation 21 verse 6 says, And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of water of life freely to him who thirsts. Oh, Jesus, I'm thirsty right now. Give me more of that fountain. 
Revelation 22, verse 13 says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Oh, God doesn't have a beginning because he is the beginning. <clears throat> In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Oh, in the beginning, Jesus was there with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. Yesterday, I tried to tell a Muslim that, and he was like, oh, no, 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 no. But you know what? If that Muslim was to die yesterday night or today, he won't have an excuse before God. Oh, nobody ever preached to me that Jesus was God. No one ever preached to me that Jesus died on the cross. Oh, Someone did preach to him the truth. And even quote his Quran. Oh, but he did not want to listen. <clears throat> anyway, we're going to go to another song. And let's go to All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I just want more of Jesus. I want more of this of this God that I serve. Oh, the blessing of yesterday just passed. I want the blessing of today. I, and when I when I do this podcast, I can feel God's presence. I don't know if you feel Him as I feel Him when I when I'm preaching here, when I'm talking, when when I'm hearing these hymns. I I don't know if you feel Him, but I feel Him. I feel Him strongly in my life. Actually, the best moments of my day. Oh, there, there are some times I go to church and, and I enjoy the service and, and I have fun in church. But, but when I'm in God's presence, oh, I enjoy that better. Oh, I'm not saying that God's presence is not in church. There is God's presence in church when you have fellowship. But sometimes I feel the Lord better when I'm just here and, and recording. Sometimes I feel the Lord more here. But I don't know what the Lord is doing. Anyway. Well, because I'm having service within us, between all of us, we're having service too. So I get the blessing from the church and I also get the blessing from here. I don't know. But I just want more of Jesus. I, I hope you do too. We need more of Him. We need more of Jesus. 
Listen, this is the God that, that reigns. This is the God that's everlasting. This is the God that doesn't end. This is, this is the, this is the, the God that we need. El Olam, the everlasting God. El Olam, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ pos- possesses internal attributes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has attained internal redemption for us. Oh, he has attained internal redemption for us. Oh, I want that internal redemption, which I know I have through Jesus. Let me play the hymn more about Jesus. We need more about Jesus. Hallelujah. We want more of that Jesus. We want more of Jesus' love. More of His presence in our lives. More of His sovereignty in our lives. More of that, more of, of thinking of Him, of thinking of the cross. When we keep our eyes upon Jesus, the world seems so small. 
Our troubles seem so insignificant. Oh, when we keep Jesus in our minds. Oh, there's nothing that that Jesus cannot do. Oh, there's nothing that Jesus cannot do. There's nothing that he cannot overcome in our lives. Oh, you might think, oh, I'm struggling here. I don't know what I can do. I don't know if I'm going to make it through this situation. Oh, try the, the everlasting God, the internal God who is Jesus. And you'll make it through. You're, you're guaranteed you'll make it through. Oh, people have gone through worse to trials than you, brother and sister. And they are, they are still going through it. But guess what? Jesus pulled them through one trial and he'll give them strength to go through another trial. Oh, we need Jesus. I need him yesterday and I need him today even more. And tomorrow I'm going to need him more. Oh, we need more of Jesus, more of his presence, more of his spirit. Oh, we need the filling of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Oh, la Messiah, the Kitaya. We need more of Jesus. And let's just pray for you right now, brother and sister. Let's just pray. Let's pray to get more of Jesus, of this everlasting God, this internal God, this God that never ends. Oh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I pray. Fill us with your presence. Show us your everlastingness, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Fill us, Lord God. Control our lives, O oh Lord. May our eyes be upon you, Lord, the author and finisher of our faith, the prince of life, the prince of peace. Oh, the everlasting Father, Emmanuel, God with us. Oh, God, may our minds, our thoughts, our patterns of life be about you. Oh, God, may you be everything in our lives. May you be the filling of our emptiness, Lord God. With you, our cup will always be full. It won't be half empty and half full. It will be completely full. And we pray for that filling in in our lives. Fill us. And break the chains, the bonds, the yokes, the things that house us from following you the way we're supposed to, Lord. Break the addictions, Lord God. <clears throat> I look outside and I see addicts, Lord God. People that have no control of the drugs that they're consuming. They're like walking zombies, Lord. Lord God, give them life, oh Lord. Break those chains, those bonds, those yokes. We rebuke those demons, Lord God. This president <clears throat> has not done his job. He said he was going to do something about the drug problem. If anything, he made it worse, Lord God. The drugs are now worse than ever, Lord. Lord God, we pray in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, that you will do something. <laughs> In America, Lord God. That you will break those chains, those addictions, Lord God. Lift up rehabs, Lord God. Lift up men and women with our heart to see these people change and save. Oh, lift up believers, Lord. Lift them up, Lord God. May our light shine upon this world of darkness. Our light, which is you, Lord God, because you are the light. We're just reflecting that light, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, help us, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord bless everyone, and I'll see you next program of Mr. Kakalides and the Bible Podcast. See you later on tonight or later on today. Lord bless. Bye.